Everton. I think that's I hope so. I read. He comes straight back into the team if he's fit. I think Kivior has shown that you can trust the squad and it won't all go to crap. I think that we have like this very narrow view of the team, mostly based on Arteta not trusting them. But when Arteta loosens the reins just a little bit, Kivior got three games in a row. And besides maybe one bad moment against Fulham, I think he's done a good job. I he's really done okay, don't think... man. Yeah. And you're always going to have a drop off between Gabriel Magalash and the next guy. Let's be real, you know. But I think Kivior has shown that in his natural position, he can do a job for us. And that's a great thing to, to realize. Some men would have to do a job, man. You just yeah. like, Not everyone's playing 20 odd games. And I would say with, with Kivior, and I still maintain it, and I'd actually extend it to Mikel Moreno, for all your criticisms and your faults and what you're good and bad at, I think if you two showed more personality, more so Kivio, because I've seen a lot more, I think you'd be a lot better. I do think Kivio plays within himself is probably a bit too humble. And I think with M Mikel Moreno, I think that's kind. Of, I think you're a bit safe on the pitch. But I mainly think that because I don't know if you listen to when he talks post game, but he always sounds a bit like, like allow me, my English isn't the best. And I'm sitting, I'm like, your English is very good. Believe in yourself a bit more, but it's a timing thing. Do you think there's light at the end of the tunnel for Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus in what's left of the season? Yes, I have to. Um, I don't. I, I feel wait. like, so I think in the way that we're playing now, like we played against Monaco, I do think naturally Martinelli and Jesus will be better. I think if we're not playing funeral football, those <laughs> players will naturally score more goals. Will it ever change the fact that we need to upgrade in those positions? No, but we don't really need to worry about that right now because, again, the window is not open. We all know as Arsenal fans, we must improve those two positions. So I think we can park that for a second and task Mikel Arteta a little bit more to get more get out a of bit more, group. Get a bit more blood from these stones, man. Squeeze a yeah, bit more juice out of them. Yeah, because even with Jesus, I think I'll never, I'll never think that he's going to score a lot of goals. Like, that's not him. But I think what's really disappointing is that we even lost the things that he's actually really good at which is linking play and playing with his teammates and what he did against Monaco, that pass, you know, that quick movement to open up for that pass into Saka. And even that player is better than what we've been getting. And that player is useful to Arsenal in certain circumstances. To yeah, so, like, we don't have a clinical striker. So I don't think we need to be like, all oh, yeah, but if Jesus plays, we won't get any goals. Those two chances that Jesus misses, I know Kai Havertz misses at least one of those. Trust, yeah. yeah. Saka's the only one you're betting your house is going to bag in. Yeah. I would have said the Trussard of last season. Trussard, I can't, because of what I've seen so far, I can't <laughs> You just that don't team. know with him either. Yeah. So, yeah, it's I do lucky think that. All of them. I think there's, there's room for the two of them, even like Trossard and whoever is inconsistent right now, to play much better attacking football in the second half of the season as long as Arteta allows it. I think you're bang on the money. What do you make of this? Because this is interesting from Oliver. He said, hot take, but I feel like the striker thing is a bit of a myth. It's not like we've a system around elite catering to a big number nine, like pre Harlan City. I agree indirectly. I think we need a striker and Arteta would have to change what he's doing. But for me, I always say this. Yeah, we can mock Kai and Gabriel Jesus and all these things. But if it was a thing like yesterday, we'd be playing where there's a million chances. Cool, striker scores. But we don't exactly play like that week in, week out. Where are you at with that? Um, I kind of understand, you know, and I think that people make a good point when they're like, we we can't just have somebody that just scores goals. Um, we need somebody that helps facilitate a little bit more. I get that. Um, but we can still upgrade on what we have. I do think that, like, there's no reason why we can't go out there and find somebody that links play decently but can still offer more goals, you know. So um, I really... I get that, and I know a lot of Arsenal fans want somebody that gives you the feeling that Jesus did in 2022-2023, but we, still need, time, we need at least a player that can do those things and score more goals consistently, or we need somebody that can come off of the bench that just scores goals. We need one of the two. We really do, whether that's Kai continues to start, but you have a Duran on the bench, kind of guy that you know is going to bag off of the bench, or we just need to upgrade the overall person up front that can do a little bit of everything, but it's going to score more than Kai, you know? So Facts. we still have to, you know, like we need that, you know? So Arsenal need to figure out 
what they have available to them in the summer, I think we're more likely to get somebody that comes off of the bench and scores goals. So how do you feel about January? Then? January is now that's a myth. Like Dan Potts said on my uh, on my channel, January for Arsenal fans done. is just January. It's just January. Like it's just the new year. I don't anticipate us going into that winter window and doing anything but maybe bringing in some defender or something like that because we have so many injuries. But it, I don't know who Arsenal would go because nobody that is good for their team is leaving in January. So that cuts off a lot of opportunities. Unless you're going to make them available, which is it requires a that. Yeah, a or lot of money. So I think all of those attacking ambitions will exist in the summer. Like that's what we'll mostly see more links to that. But January is going to be either bringing in some sort of defender to, you know, fill in the gap or nothing. So you're not That's confident about at the Adam. We've been linked with Adamola Lookman, Nico Williams, Mohamed Kudus, no. yada yada yada. You don't think Let's... any of that can happen? No, because all of those players are important to the teams that they're in. They have ambitions as well. And why would they allow their best play? Like Kudus is a player that West Ham absolutely need this season. Release He's clause though, apparently. Anywhere. Yeah. Or eighty million. Um, Lookman is having a world class season, and Atalanta have ambitions of winning Serie A. Like they are much so in that in there, they're still in the Champions League, just like the top we are. Of Serie a. Yeah, they're, yeah, right. they're yeah, they're one of he's one of their best players. He's not leaving. So we had an opportunity, by the way. We could have brought in Lookman. He was dying to leave Atalanta in the summer. He want he was pushing for a move to PSG, and we could have tried to put our we didn't do it. <laughs> so we have to hold like we have to lay in the bed that we we made. That's the thing, and I'm with you with that. <laughs> fans, fans, for, it is. I, I don't want to agree with Evra, but it is always last season. And I think Arsenal fans, I'm not saying they're wrong, but they do fall into this trap of the propaganda of the media places. Like, I'm not saying that we need to sign people for the sake of it, but it's like if enough people say the same thing, oh, who is available? We tried for this. There's not that unique profile. Yes, in theory, that makes sense, but it's not like we're a prime city or Real Madrid side. Is there really players that can't improve us? And, and naturally, some of you are probably saying on the screen, oh my Oh my god dg who are we gonna get i can't tell you it's not my job but exactly. really really we really can't we we, we so the, the, as good as it is we could only get raheem sterling on loan which i, I don't even want to get onto sterling but you're clearly just a body fair enough if that's honestly what we believe really my final thing for you jess would be part is apparently future is uncertain there's been no significant progress on a contract would you give him a new deal um no i would not um I would go for, actually, I would move on Jorginho and Partey and bring in a younger profile and double down on Declan Rice in the six. Um, I'm with that. That's just, cool. Yeah, I'm not really, I don't feel like we need to long this out anymore. Just move him on. Um, I know that's like, well, you can't find a replacement as good as him. Well, that's why you bring in a younger profile, somebody that can grow into that position and maybe offers that passing from deep. Lavia would have been perfect, man. Yeah, you know, but you can find those players with a good sporting director, which I know you're trying to, you're going to that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would move them both on. I think we need a fresh look in midfield. And I think continuing on with Jorginho and Partey is just keeping the staleness. So, yeah. Bang on the money. I know I said last question, but like you said, sporting director, we've been linked with Roberto Alabi. I'm not expecting you to be an expert on him, neither am I. Are you having him? We've been linked with him, Dan Ashworth, Luis Campos. Where are you at with it? And like, does it, so, in fact, I'd also say on that, are you... Does it make you feel nervous that it's mid-season we ain't got a sporting director? I mean, yes, I feel like the sporting director recruitment is the most important thing from now until the summer. Because if we're still looking for our sporting director in the summer, then it's going to hurt our summer transfer window. So, yes, that needs to get done. It needs to get done 100%. now. In terms of Olave, I like him. I'm a fan of uh, Real Sociedad. I like the players that they brought in. If you like your Isaks and your Odegaards and your Marinos and Zuba Mindy's, then you would like somebody like Olave because he helped build that team. Despite I know it was so, rating Isaac like that as well. Which, exactly. Can we find guys like that that are not necessarily rated and they come here and they do a madness? I don't know. Yeah, Sociedad is, um, was punching above their weight. They really were. And that was like the work Fact. of a really good sporting director. So I would take him. I don't have an issue with him. Um, the Dan Ashworth stuff, I went over that in one of my shows. His track record, despite 
the blip of one in Southgate at United and the emails situation is very good at Brighton and Newcastle. I don't but, take him, you know. I don't know why, but I, there's something, and and there's it's really not based off anything. There's just something in my gut pause that tell, definitely pause that tells me I don't trust you, Dan Ashworth. But you are right about the Brighton. Yeah, thing, I don't so trust him. he's a decent option, but they're saying that Everton want him, which probably is a better fit because it's more of like a he's very English forward. So I don't. His boy is Richard Garlic at Arsenal, though. So it yeah, could work, so, I guess. Yeah, we'll see, but um. I saw that they want to maybe just give the job to Jason Ito. That was Edu's number two. That would be my personal, like, worst choice. Hiring from within and not going out there and getting somebody with a proven track record is right. just, you might as well just say that Arteta is running the club. This is I'm what I'm sorry. saying. Like, I don't want no more. I mean, I'm sure, listen, from, again, I'm I'm sure, you know, for Alabe, for Campos, for all these guys, they had to be rookies once upon a time in it to become who they've become. But I'm not on that. Like, fair enough, if he does the job, he does the job. But I'm not on that, man. We need an experienced hand now. We need, if, I'm not, com I say this, say this all the time. I'm not comparing Mikel Arteta to David Dean. But if, I mean, to, to Arsene Wenger, if Arteta was um, Arsene Wenger, then we need that David Dean. We need an experienced man that knows what they're doing. And they need to be given the keys because I can't comment on something I don't see. But I think Mikel Arteta's voice holds a bit too much of, of a say. Obviously, they're going to ask Arteta who he thinks should be the sporting director. But for me, even the fact that it, th that article him. we just saw said he's got a preference. What's going on? Like, he he on mentioned that. him when they asked about the sporting director thing in one of the pressers. Yeah, he mentioned why are you involved? Jason Ato doing a really good job and... So instantly my back got up because I was like, so you guys are just going to, you know, because if Arteta mentions somebody by name, I'm thinking that person is definitely in the mix. It should rolling, not yeah. be. So we should be hiring outside. It's very much so an Arsenal thing under this regime to hire from within. And we've seen like that we don't, it. it's not giving, you know, so whatever. We'll see how it goes, but they need to hire somebody now so that when the summer transfer window opens, we're ready. We can just get things done. But yeah, I'm not getting a good feeling. Hmm? Listen, there's a lot to do, and I, this is, I mean, it's Arsenal, isn't it? We love these projects and things. On the face of it, there is stability. But if me and you went through the squad, there's a lot of question marks over several players, even the players that we rate. When you look at contracts, that's before we talk about bringing people in. There's a lot to do in it. There's a there's a lot where our football club's concerned, but it makes for good content, Jess. Before I let you get out of here, as usual, thank you for being here. It's been quite civil. Let people yeah. know where to find you and when you're next live, man. Yeah, I'm still bet some on your channel as well, but it's cool. It's I cool. know I have to do the show after the Arsenal women's game now. So um yeah, I'll do a stream after the Arsenal women game. So around like 8 p.m. UK time, if you guys are interested, go in the search bar and search She Knows Arsenal. And don't I'll go in the search bar. Just click the title of the vid. Don't be lazy. It's there. Okay, like, just click the title and you'll you'll find my, my channel. So yeah, and I'll be live in a couple of hours. There you have it, man. You heard her, you know, there's Arsenal women's content. I'm sure she'll run over what we've run over and any other talking points, people. I'm sure you'll agree and disagree. So make sure you're liking, you're commenting, you're subscribing. Hopefully next week we're back on both channels again. But for now, people, we're out, man. Safe. I mean, in 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 tribute to Lewis Skelly, it's only right we show inverted fullbacks. Get against this right back, Charlie. Give it your... Have to, have to, have to. Oh!